welcome to the 320 Podcast, where we encourage you to reach for the immeasurably more life with Christ. From discussions on scripture, to poetic messages, to dreaming big with Jesus, you will enjoy a variety of episodes brought to you by Shelley Wilson Ministries. To find out more about Shelley Wilson Ministries and the many resources available to you, please visit our website at www.shellywilsonministries.org. Hey guys, it's Shelly. Welcome to this week's 320 podcast. And I'm really excited to share something with you today that the Lord put on my heart. Um, You know, he's been so good the last few weeks to kind of prepare me in advance. And um, I always appreciate when he does that, but he certainly doesn't always do that. Um, So, so y'all, if you follow me at all on Facebook, then you've seen that I did a writing this, was it this morning? Yesterday morning called a public spectacle. And I had gone to an event on Saturday morning, and oh my gosh, it was such a sweet place to be. Um, And I want to kind of share my journey in this with you because I've learned that what what God is doing in my life, if I'll be willing to share even the smallest of testimonies, it tends to encourage somebody else or maybe awaken a gift in somebody else that they they weren't sure what was there or maybe they thought maybe they had a certain bent towards a, a certain gifting and maybe not until I actually talk about it and put words to it do you do you go oh my gosh that's how he's trying to operate in me I just didn't know I didn't know what to do with that gift right and so I've certainly been there for the last gosh 20 something years with God so so Saturday, a friend of mine had messaged me a while back. She's a piano player, um, but her preference is to to play spontaneous worship. In other words, there's no plan, there's no set list. It's not like what we are kind of used to in the church, where you know everything's kind of worked out in advance. And she she came here often. Her name's Kathy Burner. She would come here often at our prayer meetings and kind of plow the field with worship. Um, and uh, we had kind of uh, played, I, I hate to use the word, but played around in worship, the two of us just trying to see if God uh, was going to do anything with us together because um, she had had a dream in the past that kind of pointed to it, and we just weren't certain. So, um, but then the Lord moved her on to another place, and, and I want to I want to tell you tell you this, this is the cool thing. So the Lord spoke to her uh, back then, and this has been a year ago, I guess maybe. Um, True love waits. Well, I think, oh my gosh, that's awesome. But I, you know, true love waits. You know, that's the the purity ring the, that we usually talk to the teens about in our church uh, gatherings and stuff. But as I was going through, after she had shared that with me, I don't know how long it was, but pretty soon thereafter, I was going through the top of my daughter's closet from back when she lived at home before she was married, a long time ago now. And in the bottom of a bag, I find this ring. I have it on today. I've worn it I've probably every, almost every day ever since. I'm videoing this for some of y'all so you can see the ring. And the ring says, true love waits. And I went, Oh my gosh, this is a word from the Lord. He gave her true love weights. And I was sharing with her, Kathy, look at the ring I just found at the bottom of this bag. I mean, what are the odds, right? Only God can do this, true love weights. The timing, God's timing is impeccable, perfect every time. And so I've been wearing this ring knowing that there was coming a season that if, if, if we, I, she, would wait on God, that there was some kind of promise, because it's a promise ring, right? He, there was some kind of promise wrapped up in true love waits. And you know what's funny? I wasn't even really going to share this with you guys today, but I think it's so important to hear and see how God speaks in such little ways, you know. Um, I think sometimes we relegate His voice to being when the Bible's open, which mine is. But that day I was looking through a bag, and my Bible wasn't open. I wasn't in prayer. I wasn't doing anything. God can bust through the mundane of my life and drop a ring in a bag that says true love waits the very message kathy had gotten so we kind of went our separate ways for a season just waiting on god you know and she uh ended up leading some worship in another place uh with those those who knew how to 
um, host spontaneous worship. So anyway, she messaged me a while back and said, Shelly, I've been asked to uh, do a worship set at um, Tent America in Longview. Would you pray about joining me? So I knew I wasn't going to say yes unless I got the word from the Lord because in this season, it's just I need the, I need the word from the Lord. Um, I, I don't have a lot of maybe strength or extra time these days to, ju- to kind of be haphazard with my goings and my comings because we have a lot going on at the ministry. And so I call a friend of mine who had, I'd been serving on a worship team with for a while. He had moved recently to Arizona to take care of his father. And I was, I was talking to him about it, saying, you know, I'm really missing the spontaneous worship that we used to all do. And he said, Shelly, just go and see. Just go and see if you feel like God's in it, you know, uh, experience it. And I thought, well, that's, that's good. That's probably a good word. I can, you know... I've had to do that in the past, too, where you just have to go and see. Come and see, you know. But this is what he said next. He said, you know, Shelly, it's kind of like the dandelion. And as soon as he said that, I went, God is sending me. Isn't that precious? Because what he didn't know is that God speaks to me. The dandelion is is very special very special to me with the Lord. I've written many poems about it, many writings about it. Um, You know, I have it on a coffee mug. Uh, God taught me. I had to research dandelions years ago, and he taught me all about them and how they point to Jesus and and to his spirit and how that little puff ball, you know, flies and and it can plant millions of seeds in a field. Um, And the puff ball part of the dandelion is actually the mature part. I had always wondered that. Is it the yellow flower that's the mature part or is it the puff ball? It's actually the puff ball, which makes perfect sense when you think about kingdom things. You're like, okay, we're this pretty flower. But see, when you turn into maturity in Christ, you begin to go multiply the, multiply the kingdom. You will be about the Father's bid, business when the wind blows, just like that dandelion. He will blow you here, there, and yonder to plant seeds in a field for him. Right. So I knew I said, you don't even have to say anything else to me. Just the word dandelion lets me know God is in this and this is an assignment for me. And so we went and it was my first time to do an entire hour set of spontaneous worship. We had not rehearsed together. I didn't know. She she plays what she hears and I sing what I hear. And and there was, you know, it's it's a in the moment kind of thing. And uh the beautiful thing about that is, is God had reminded me that about 11 years ago, I began to pray that he would give me songs on the spot, that I would be a hearer of his voice in any given moment, and I could be able to sing a song I was hearing. And, and, I, and God fulfilled that prayer for me on Saturday. He did it in other places a little bit at a time, but Saturday was kind of like, uh, what I felt was like the breaking through of a new season for me, the breaking new uh, t- into a new level, if you will, although that word is overused, but into a newness with Jesus and, and a newness of hearing well. And, and that now not only do I get to be Holy Spirit led when I write poetry or, or, or write songs, but that even when I'm involved in a worship set, that I can trust the Holy Spirit to sing through me what he wants to say. And, and we had so much fun. We were in, in perfect sync. The Holy Spirit was so faithful to her. I never knew what she was going to play. I would just wait until I could feel the wind of the Spirit and the rhythm that he had her in. And then I would begin to sing what he put on my heart or look up a scripture in the Word. It was, it was just so much fun, y'all. Life in the Spirit with Jesus is so much fun. I cannot say any more about that. Um, and then, then there was a, a sweet girl who had came up to me and said, listen, the Lord is really uh, wanting me to, to, to speak to you, to pray over you. And she began to pray some things over me that, that I knew were true, uh, uh, some prophetic words that, that I knew. Like, I knew she knew who I was in the Spirit. God had already told her as I began to share what I did. And, and she began to talk to me about the secret place and how the things I had cultivated in the secret place um, – even sometimes in sadness, sorrow, and tears, that God had broken me there to be poured out like an offering, you know. And so that was precious to me in my heart. I'm remembering all those scriptures while she's talking to me. And then the next morning, I'm in the closet, you know, and and I hear the Lord say, 
public spectacle. And I and, and he just began to talk to me about how he was about to make a good public spectacle out of those who had been really sewing in the secret place away from limelights, lime away from the crowds and being okay with kind of being unseen in a space with him where, where it's just an audience of one. You know, so I want to read that writing to you first, but the beautiful thing is then this morning I'm in prayer and I, and I, I, ha, her, I didn't hear it, y'all. I saw it. I saw a vision of Acts chapter 4. Really highlighted Acts 4. So let me read the writing first and then we'll go through Acts 4 and I'll kind of share with you what I think God's saying. So this writing is called a public spectacle. Remember, this was Sunday morning. Uh, and today I'm recording this on Monday for you tomorrow. So sorry, I hope that's not confusing. It says, while in prayer this morning, the Lord began to speak to me about something on his heart. He is about to make some of you public spectacles. This is not a negative thing, but an honoring of your work in the secret place. I could liken it to David in the cave of Adullam, or perhaps you hid from the souls and had to die to the reputation of man. Yet God was making a man or woman after his own heart. It was the dark place where you plowed the field in prayer away from the limelight and show of the church, the wilderness way whereby his voice became your everything. This is a moment where those who were rejected by man will be made public spectacles in a way where others will say she or he has been with Jesus. There will be a sudden recompense and unveiling and many will see what God has done while you were hidden, in under, hidden under his wings. You will bear the marks of tearful travailing that sowed seed of his spirit at work in you. It will be a coming of his glory in ways others have not seen. The Pharisees will marvel and wonder at how Christ in you carries you in a power and authority that can no longer be denied. He was never going to let you be controlled by men when he needed you to be controlled by his spirit. Your secret place will now become a public spectacle by which others see an intimacy that they too long for, but many have never known. Just remember, dear ones, all you need to do is take that secret place to the public place. It was never about serving an audience. It was always about serving the king. Because you were faithful in this in private, you will soon be rewarded in public. Matthew 6.6, 6, But you, when you pray, go into your room, and when you have shut your door, pray to your Father who is in the secret place, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you openly look at that isn't that awesome guys so i released that uh on facebook and instagram i guess yesterday and then this morning uh it's a late night for me here on a monday night the ministry so I, I i wanted to kind of linger with the lord that was a word that kept coming to us saturday as other worship leaders would step up and and start leading just this word to not tarry to not rush in god's presence and to learn how to linger to slow down with jesus so i was really trying to slow my own self down with jesus and go you know lord if I don't even go to the support group tonight, I'm okay. I just need to be in your presence this morning. And I had I had been uh, worshiping and praying, but I had not yet opened the word. And um, I had asked him, you know, God, where do you want to go in your word today? You know, uh, there's a lot of things on my heart and mind, but I want to know where you want to go today. And very quickly, I catch a vision uh, of, of the word Acts 4. And so I got up, I went to my Bible, and I opened Acts 4. And you are not going to believe all of this, but I'm going to read it all to you. This is a New King James Version. So it says, Now as they spoke to the people, the priests, the captain of the temple, and the Sadducees came upon them, being greatly disturbed that they taught the people and preached in Jesus the resurrection from the dead. And they laid hands on them and put them in custody until the next day, for it was already evening. However, many of those who heard the word believed, and the number of the men came to be about 5,000. And it came to pass on the next day that their rulers, elders, and scribes, as well as Annas, yes, the high priest, Caiaphas, John, and Alexander, and as many as were of the family of the high priest, were gathered together at Jerusalem. 
And when they had set them in the midst, they asked, By what power or by what name have you done this? Then Peter, verse 8, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers of the people and elders of Israel, if we this day are judged for a good deed done to a helpless man, by what means he has been made well, let it be known to you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, by him this man stands here before you whole. This is the stone which was rejected by you builders, which has become the chief cornerstone. Nor is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. Verse 13. This is where it gets good, guys. Now, when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were uneducated and untrained men, they marveled. And they realized that they had been with Jesus. Look at that. Just what I'd written. And seeing the man who had been healed standing with them, they could say nothing against it. But when they had commanded them to go aside out of the council, they conferred among themselves, saying, What shall we do to these men? For indeed, that a notable miracle has been done through them is evident to all who dwell in Jerusalem. And we cannot deny it. Look at that, y'all. But so that it, I'm sorry, verse 17, but so that it spreads no further among the people, let us severely threaten them that from now on they speak to no, na to no man in this name. In other words, they were trying to contain the message, contain the messengers. So they called them and commanded them not to speak at all, nor teach in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John answered and said to them, Whether it is right in the sight of God to listen to you more than to God, you judge. For we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. Oh my gosh, can I just stop there and say, listen. For those of you that God is about to honor as a public spectacle because you've been faithful in the private place, prepare for war. That the same things the Pharisees and Sadducees did back then are going to come and do it again. And, and I've actually had this personally happen. I've been uh, persecuted in the last uh, few, maybe the last year or so, even by some uh, pastors in leadership who, when we began to um, set people free of demonic bondages, they were quest questioning what kind of spirit we had, which is absolutely what this is talking about, right? Instead of being... Um, instead of being happy and rejoicing that someone was set free, they were, they were calling it the devil when obviously the devil doesn't cast out the devil, as Jesus, as Jesus says. Jesus is the one that casts out the demons. And, and I want to say this to you. You will have to learn. If, if you're going to go with Jesus, you better learn to say what he said, um, whether it is right in the sight of God to listen to you more than to God. Y'all are going to have to learn. It doesn't matter who it is, if they're in leadership or they carry some kind of title. You better do what Jesus says, right? And, and choose him over others. So when they had further threatened them, right? Here we come, guys, into a church age in this season where the church is going to be threatened. Listen, you're going to be threatened. Um, I have yet to be threatened by an unbeliever, but all of my threatenings have come from uh, people in, in leadership positions. Okay. 20, verse 23, And being let go, they went to their own companions and reported all that the chief priests and elders had said to them. So when they heard that, they raised their voice to God with one accord and said, Lord, you are God who made heaven and earth and the sea and all that is in them, who by your mouth or the mouth of your servant David have said, Why did the nations rage and the people plot vain things? The kings of the earth took their stand. Come on, y'all. And the rulers were again were gathered together against the Lord and against his Christ. Listen, it's going to happen to you. It's going to happen to me. We're going to have to get over it. Verse 27. For truly against your holy servant Jesus, when you anointed both Herod and Pontius Pilate, with the Gentiles and the people of Israel were gathered together to do whatever your hand and your purpose determined before you be done. Now, Lord, look on their threats and grant to your servants that with all boldness 
they may speak your word. Listen, I love verse 30. By stretching out your hand to heal. Look at that. Now, Lord, look at their threats and grant to your servants that with all boldness, they may speak your word by. Look at this. Speak your word by stretching out your hand to heal. And that signs and wonders may be done through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. And when they had prayed, the place where they were assembled together was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and they spoke the word of God with what? Boldness. Verse 32. Now the multitude of those who believed were of one heart and one soul. Neither did anyone say that any of the things he possessed was his own, but they had all things in common. And with great power, the apostles gave witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. Nor was there anyone among them who lacked, for all who were possessors of lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of the things that were sold and laid them at the apostles' feet, and they distributed to each as anyone had need. All right, I'm going to stop us right there. Whew. Do you see God has a message? When you have been in the secret place with Jesus, Matthew 6, 6, and the door has been shut, and you feel like you're in a season of hiddenness, or maybe it feels like you're a season in a season of wilderness or in the cave, but you've continued to praise and you've continued to do all the right things. You've, con you've continued to be obedient, which is better than sacrifice is what the word says. Yes, people will rage against you. But look what happens. They were confound the wise were confounded by the unlearned and uneducated people. Uh, Kathy and I were talking about Saturday because you know I don't have any skill to write music I just hear I write what I hear and she doesn't have any skill to play she plays what she hears and she said to me before our it was time for our set she said Shelly I'm just coming like a little child and I went oh and that's what he wants from us today is just to come like a little child believing that when I open my mouth the Holy Spirit will tell me what to speak believing that he orders the steps of the righteous believing that he has something he wants to say and because we've been faithful in the secret place of prayer in the worshiping of God when there was no audience in the travailing uh, and, and birthing of things in the dark room uh, in what we would call the dark night of the soul, that God is now calling for there to be a public spectacle made of those private saints. Because you know why? He wants people to look at us and go, wow, there is no denying that they have been with Jesus because there's no way man could have done this. And that is, that is the Jesus we serve, guys. That is the Jesus we serve, where all of a sudden we come out of the quiet place. And some of us have, have, have been in there for years, right? Where we've just stayed contained with the Lord and shunned, uh, I hate to say shunned, removed ourselves in a lot of ways from industry, from the church um, circles in the way that are kind of... Uh, building themselves up as business-based things uh, from marketing and it, it advertising from my world music and, and you know, pay-to-play kind of games and stuff like that, you know, that the anointing is not cheap. It cannot be bought. You know what I mean? God gives that to each of us uniquely and, and, and puts us in a place in the field that he designed us for. But when we come out of that place, we come out different. We come out change we come out with a boldness that people are like oh, that has to be Jesus and that is what God is after in this season that some of you through whether it, whether you were in the secret place alone the dark night of the soul because somebody put you there somebody spoke you there somebody pained you to go there somebody sent you there somebody spoke words over your gift and murdered it and you kept it to yourself because you you thought well maybe God didn't really give me the gift the devil is a liar. But God went immediately to turn that thing for good. 
And now you'll come out of the secret place because what you did with him in private, he will reward now openly. And you will come out, not just with the precious blood of the lamb, the tenderness and the gentleness of Jesus, his kindness that leads men to repentance. People will know that you've seen the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. They will know that you hear from God. They will know that you're not just familiar with God, but you are a friend of God. A real friend of God, like Abraham, after he obeyed. And you'll come out of that prayer closet with the very gifts he's given you. You went in knowing the the lamb, but you're going to come out with the lion right? The Lion of Judah. And He's going to begin to roar in you. And there is going to be a supernatural boldness. I'm telling you, I've witnessed in my own heart the last 10 years, specifically the last three to five, where I have been shocked when I've looked in the mirror and, or I've, I've, I've given a message or I've said something that years ago I wouldn't have had the courage to say that needed to be said when God's called me to to minister a message that's you know one of repentance or or whatever or birth a certain song or write a certain writing to call the church back to holiness listen I've looked I've sat in this office and gone who am I right because there was a season where all it was was me and the Lord in the secret place That was where my ministry was, just ministering to the Lord and letting Him minister to me. You know, it's that place where all the pain, the the hard places, the valley seasons have now become, I wrote a few days ago, your weapons for the kingdom now. The very thing that you hated happened to you has now become a weapon for you and for others, if you'll let God put it, if you'll put that thing in his hand, he will now use it. And what happens is we see the upper room where, where things are shaken, right? And everybody was filled with the Holy Spirit, which is something we all need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And they spoke the word of God with boldness. There was something different. What happened in the quietness as they assembled together in the place of prayer now became a public spectacle that was shaken. They were filled with the Holy Ghost, and then they spoke the word of God with boldness. I'm telling you right now, you are going to be shocked at who you end up being at the end of this season. Not only that, the church is going to be shocked at who God has actually called, put his hand on, put his anointing in, his favor on. That who is going to come out of the gate, out of the cave of Adullam, out of all the dark places like Elijah. He's, he's, he is blowing his wind now and he's going to say, Elijah, what are you doing here? It's time to show yourself forth, right? It's like John the baptizer came out of the wilderness into his season of assignment. The very thing he was birthed to do came to fruition, not because he made it, but because God had already ordained it far before, long before he was even in the womb. It is the same for you and I, guys. What a wonderful day to be on the earth. I know things look dark, and I know things are getting a little crazy, but do you know If you will step into your place and space with Jesus, you have the authority of the king. He, you are wearing his signet ring where he has fully approved you for the work at hand. And so today I want to encourage those of you who have felt lost, you felt hidden. God is about to make a public spectacle of you and it is going to be so glorious, far greater than you ever thought or imagined. So let me pray over you and then I'll let you guys go. God, I thank you so much that you have a word for us today that, that Lord, I am so grateful that could, I can sit at your throne and go, Lord, what, where do you want me to go in the word today? What is on your heart and that you can 
you can actually give us vision. You can give drop a word of knowledge. You can you can do something supernatural natural that puts us in the exact passage that we needed to hear, that needed to confirm another word. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. I thank you, Holy Spirit, the third person of the Godhead who is alive and active and moving with power in this hour and how you're bringing your bride back to the marriage of the word and the spirit. That, Lord, you are saying you will speak the word with boldness by stretching out your hand to heal. You will give signs and wonders, God, through the name of Jesus. It's not that we have to have signs and wonders. It's that it's who you are. It's what you do. It's what you've always done. So I don't have to be afraid of signs and wonders, God. Lord, Saturday for me was just a wonder. It was just a wonder that you answered a prayer of a little girl who said, Hi, Lord, but I would like to release songs that you would give me on the spot. Who knew that was even a thing, Jesus? I had no idea. Bless the Lord. Thank you, God, for every listener. Thank you, Lord, for pulling the Davids out of the cave in this hour. Thank you, God, for going and nudging Elijah to come on out in the name of Jesus, that it's time to speak the word with boldness, with clarity, with conviction, and with the power of the Holy Ghost. I thank you, God, that you are calling your your remnant men and women to now, um, I hate to say the word shuck, but that's the word that comes about, to shuck off every voice other than yours, God, that this is your uh, servant. These are your servants. They are your vessels. You are the one who created them, and you know exactly what they were designed to do and be. I bind and I, I command every spirit that's taunting them to tell them they're not enough. You will never be this, that, or the other. In Jesus' name, I command you out of their lives. In Jesus' name. I separate every hearer, hearer from every spirit of the enemy, whether it's a spirit of infirmity, a spirit of anxiety, a spirit of depression, a spirit of abuse, a spirit of witchcraft. In Jesus' name, go. Go now. In Jesus' name. Lord, I thank you that as the, those spirits vacate the premise that you baptize, come on the heels of that God and baptize in the Holy Ghost anyone who has yet to experience that moment with you. I thank you, Lord. You are so unique to every heart that you do it different with every single one of us. I love that about you, Lord. I thank you, God, that even though the Pharisees and the Sadducees will try to contain us like they did, Lord, in it, with you, that there is no container that can hold the Spirit of the living God in us. Thank you, God. You break through every grave. You come out of every grave in Jesus' name today in these lives. Everybody comes out of the grave. Every spirit of loss, every spirit of death comes out in Jesus' name of their life. You will live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. That is just how it's going to be in Jesus' name. I thank you, God, that you will put in them the very Acts 4, verse 20, for we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. They will not be quiet. They will not be silent. They will not be shut down. I declare they will speak boldly with a freedom and they will be shocked at what comes out of their mouth. I thank you, Lord, that they will plow the ground and plow the field until you call us home. That we will be a bride who reckons with hell. I thank you, Lord, that every day we get up, the devils cringe because they wish we weren't here. I thank you, Lord, that we need not have a spirit of fear. You give them one, uh, us one of power, love, and a sound mind. I have a sound mind. I just speak over every listener. You, I declare you have a sound mind because you have the mind, the very mind of Christ. The very mind of Christ. I command every diagnosis of bipolar, schizophrenia, all mental health in Jesus' name to go in Jesus' name. Everything that might have been sent of the enemy goes in Jesus' name. Lord, I also ask for any chemical imbalances in the body, in the brain, that you would bring a healing power, that healing balm right now in Jesus' name. Because God, I'm, I've got my, my finger pointed right on the scripture that says your servants that will, all, will speak with boldness, boldness the word by stretching out your hand. Lord, I stretch out my hand to the microphone now and I say, God, heal every chemical imbalance. Every hormonal imbalance will be healed in Jesus' name. 
Father, let the anointing go through the microphone, through the video, in Jesus' name, for healings. Lord, I ask you even right now, in Jesus' name, that there would be reports that come of a great shaking in their lives, of the hot oil of healing balm that I know you pour out when you choose to, and that there would be a tangible feeling of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of tongues in every life who listens, because that gift edifies edifies me. It makes me stronger in my inner man. And it's the spirit praying to the spirit. It's the perfect prayer. Lord, I pray that over them today, God. And I thank you for your confirmation of your word. That you are not a man that you should lie. And for those who have been sowing faithfully in the secret place, unseen by man. Not acknowledged by human beings. But they've been watched by you, the great eagle. Lord, I thank you that your word says you will publicly now publicly honor them what a god we serve lord you miss nothing at all we bless you today in the name of jesus amen all right guys see y'all next week we hope today's episode has blessed you and encouraged you to pursue christ passionately to join us again for more encouragement equipping and empowering subscribe to the 320 podcast We would also like to invite you to enjoy our round-the-clock radio station, Royalty For Real Radio for Women, at royaltyforreal.com. That's royalty, the number four, real.com.